We play and call it work. Hey everybody, welcome to the Imperial Fist Codex review slash first impressions. I got Jake here with me. And Hello. He's kind of a mini war gaming regular at this point. Been up here three times. It's great. <laughs> we love it. Come in, play. That's actually yeah. I uh, hope you have a lot of fun. You have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, good. Every time I, I lose, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the new Space Marines. Imperial Fist Codex, or supplement. Supplement, yeah. Uh, and we're going to go through it and give you our first impressions. And I want you to know that we have already played a couple of games together. We have, yeah. Uh, so paired to this video, there'll be a game where we're playing in the vault. Uh, I am playing Imperial Fist and you're playing Ashen Terum. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. That is in the mini where you vault. Now, if you're not already a vault member, you can click the link below this in the title, or straight in the description of this video. Uh, you have a seven-day free trial to watch that and weigh in on the video. You can cancel afterwards and all that kind of stuff. You know how it works. Either way, let's get into what this book is. Uh, we're gonna maybe jump all over the place. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions about a little this. bit. We have gone through this book probably a little bit more in depth than I have in previous books. We do in depth. Uh, sorry, uh, first impressions. So this is a little bit more than a first impressions. Yeah, us. I mean, we've got a couple games under our belt. We've yeah. looked at the stratagems. We've talked about it. Um, we've tried to come up with a, a way to make it work because honestly, when it came out, everybody's gonna be like, "Well, is it as good as Imperial or Iron Hands?" Yep. Everybody's gonna be like, "Are they black?" And the answer is no, no they're yeah. yellow. But um, they're good. So the, the, I agree with you on that. Now, months ago, not even that long, weeks ago, I think we're all in the office here predicting that this was going to be the best one. We don't. We had nothing to back that up. We just had this feeling about Imperial Fist and like Bolter Drill and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, okay, when this book comes in, we've had it for a couple of days and we're reading it, looking at it, and we're going through the office and the consensus was, this is, this is, Boring. This lacks focus. You were this, unhappy with this yeah. book when we sat down to play our first game. Well, well, got ready. It, it, it didn't. It didn't. Um, reading through it, nothing captures you. Like, nothing is like this is really good. No. This is this is the style you're gonna play at. I don't see uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't see what it wanted to do. To to expand on that, we grab all of the supplements. When you look at the Raven Guard supplement, you know how the Raven Guard is gonna play. Right. Yeah. You know the They're sneaky ones. boys. Yeah. You know how the Iron Hands are gonna play. You know how the White Scars are gonna play. To a degree, when you first, well, well, when most of us, I think all of us here at the building, first looked at this one, we didn't see it. Like, how is this, what is this one trying to do? It has some direction. Yeah. But like, it also, it kind of, it seems to lack a little focus. The initial thoughts were it seemed to lack a little focus. If I'm going to be honest, I think people got confused by the bonus damage against buildings. Because everybody's like, oh man, they do bonus damage to buildings. And, and, and vehicles. And vehicles. And that and vehicles is very critical. Yeah. Because if you took out the buildings part, because who plays buildings, Well, the and vehicles is still really good. So my, my opinion of the bonus damage of vehicles, it's quite good. It's actually, it's actually very good. It's very good. Um, you know, so think about like a repulsor executioner with a the laser destroyer. Mm -hmm. Is minimum damage three if you're no, Imperial Fist. Yeah. It's minimum four in the Devastator But more importantly, this, we, we should get, well... We'll get back to it. I think you, you're the one who kind of found out the, the real the real strength of that ability in the army. It's all the autocannon stuff. Yeah, autocannons are beautiful. I mean, autocannons have been great in 8th edition in general because flat damage is good. Yep. Strength 7 is good against most things. I mean, your wounding on 4s are better A partner most autocannon of the time. doing 4 damage or a regular autocannon <laughs> doing 3, like that is really good. But we'll get, we'll get to that. First thing we should do is we should give you... The rules. The of this rules. Book. Yep. Okay. So we should point out that we got the new character Tor Garadon. I don't yep. have to get into him because that's all over the web, uh, the Warmer Community site already. There is no chapter master character. Right. Unfortunately, uh, the rules, other than their regular space, sorry, their, their tactical doctrine. I uh, got tactical doctrine. Their um, chapter tactics. You know what they have, uh, but they have Legacy Adorn now. Uh, while the Devastator doctrine is active. Uh, when resolving attack with a heavy weapon by a model with this ability, so everything, uh, against a vehicle or a building, add one to the damage characteristic. It doesn't seem, it's not the three rules that hands get. No. It's not the mediocre one the Raven Guard yet. No. Um, it's somewhere in between. Yeah. It's, 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 that my initial thoughts, that, that, that seems not bad, not great, I'm not wowed by that. Now, after playing a couple of games, I'm kind of wowed by it, to be honest with you. But my initial <laughs> thoughts were, I'm not that's wowed fair. by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's what they got. Cool. They have the same uh, whole half bolter page drill. Of rules um, and, yeah. They had the bolter drill from before. So, with bolt weapons, <coughs> sixes to hit cause two hits, which is nice because you don't have to, or, like with orcs, you roll a six to hit, you roll another dice to see if you hit again. With Imperial Fist, you hit with a bolter weapon with a six, you just add another dice to your pool for rolling to win. You know, I think I, in the game, it's in the bolt. Did I forget that? Did it uh, matter? I don't know if it mattered. 
No, I don't think it mattered very much. Yeah. I think you did forget it a bunch, but it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. Um, and then they also have the ignoring cover, which... Again, not bad. That's actually... Uh, at the beginning of the eighth, the ignoring... Well, when this all came out with the Iron Hands... I'm uh, sorry, Iron Hands. Iron Warriors and, and Fist yep. had the ignore cover. I'm like, yeah, the worst one. Because the rules for cover was so bad. Yeah. Um, now the, where the game has evolved, I, it's, a, it's one of my favorite abilities. And where the way people play it, where basically most things, it's now. pretty easy to get cover on most tables. I actually You, love you it. almost can count ignoring cover as a bonus point of AP. So in addition to their AP from the Devastator Doctrine or the Tactical Doctrine, the ignore yeah. cover almost functions a lot of the time as an, an extra, as an extra AP minus one. That's the thing too. Like even, even if this book is, even if I want to say this book, is, I'm not saying this book is bad. If, I, if even if this book was bad, it's still in the Space Frame Codex. Like it's still, yeah, it yeah. still uses It's got this a lot book. of gas behind it's still, it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Okay, let's go through the Warlord traits. We have, sure. in my opinion, they're all kind of mediocre, except for one which I'm gonna use every game. Like literally, I, I see that in almost every review, but this is the one you're actually going to use every game. Uh, on the first one, we got Siege Master. Resolving attack made by the Warlord against a building or vehicle, add one to the wound roll. Not terrible, not fantastic, it's a Warlord trait. Uh, I mean, it's probably fine on like somebody who's going to try and punch tanks. Yeah. So if you got a warlord who's going to run out front and hit things, um, which you don't always want your warlord to do. You don't, but a thunder hammer wounding on threes is better than yeah. fours. But you can also give this to your non warlord. Oh, can you do non warlord? No, you can't. Never mind. Uh, I mean, you can spend a command point to give somebody else a warlord trait. Is it somebody else warlord trait? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a, I think it's give somebody a second warlord trait. We, we can wait. Yeah, we'll wait. So we'll like that's. You don't have a super awesome gun on your Warlord that you're going to be shooting things with, so probably a melee trait, which is not amazing. Uh, what? Yeah, Indomitable. Indomitable. When resolving an attack made against this Warlord, an unmodified wound roll of 1 to 3 always fails. That's not bad. Irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making that attack may have. It's not bad. So that even works against, like, Vindicares. Yeah. I, I, I don't... I, do we, I'm not a fan... Of, these are, this is where my play style comes in. I'm not a fan of things that are... I'm only gonna take effect if I, my my opponent caught me. Like I'm not gonna. If I, right. if I want my warlord in combat, I want to have attacked you first. If I don't want my warlord in combat, I don't want to get attacked. Like yeah. So it's, I mean, it's good. Again, sniper heavy meta. If you're facing a yeah. raven guard player who's got three squads of eliminators. Yeah, that's actually fair. That's good. Um, that's actually yeah, you're right. Yep. I so I mean, it's not the worst. It's not the one in here that you're gonna pick all the time. Not one. Wow. But situationally. Maybe but, I mean, this is typical for Warlord Trace. There's always like, yeah. one or two. Yeah. And, and you know what? That doubles up nicely with the one we just read. Uh, plus one to wound against vehicles, and one to threes always fail. Lord. Now you got a Smash Captain who's hitting a knight, and the knight's still stomping him on fours. Yeah, that's true. Next we got Fleet Master. It's once per battle. Uh, it's basically an orbital bombardment, exactly the same as orbital bombardment, only you use it at the end of the fight phase. Yep, and it doesn't say you didn't have to move. So you can move around the battlefield in one time at the end of the assault phase, which... You didn't even have to assault anything. You can drop an orbital bombardment. Cool. Not bad. I tried it. It's all right. Very meh. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be a static gun line where you don't ever want to be in combat, I mean, I'll take it. Yeah. What's next? We have stubborn... Uh, this warlord cannot fall back. When resolving an attack against this warlord, have any damage inflicted rounding up. Okay, again, stubborn that's, heroism. That's probably better than Domino, but maybe not better? I, who knows? It depends on if you're taking multi-damage attacks. Yeah. Um, and... It's all about the heroes. not falling back really hurts. You can't ever it yeah. fits thematically. I would, I would it, never use it's it really fluffy. Yeah. Um, I could see using it if you're playing a narrative game for fun. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, for sure. Totally. Like I got my warlord stubborn, man. He just doesn't want to go anywhere. He goes forward, not back. So uh, I, I think I see this in every review, but I'll say like everything I'm saying comes from from a lack of a better word, a power gamer point of view, not that I'm saying I'm always a power gamer, what I'm saying is, if I'm going to review a book, I'm going to talk about the, the strongest way. Yeah, yeah you're that's, not the that's guy in the office who's like, let me come up with a cool story yeah, yeah. for this named well, character just that the, I really yeah, like. Yeah, just for the purpose of the review, yeah. I'm trying to come at you with the, what I think is the best of the best. Uh, architect, architect of War, resolving attack against a friendly Imperial Fist unit within six of the Warlord, uh, reduce their uh, AP weapon by one. Um, in addition... No, it's not reduce, it's... Uh, ignore one? Ignore the first level? Yeah. Where With the weapon that is armor penetration characteristic of minus one, if a unit is receiving the benefit of cover, add an additional one to the saving throw. Yeah, so that's the one That's the one that I'm going to use most of the time. It's not the one I'm going to use every game, it's the one I'm going to use most of the time. It's going to buff you. Really? Yeah, why not? Because you're going to get... So, uh, when resolving an attack against a friendly Imperial Fist unit within six of the Warlord, a weapon that has armor penetration of one, uh, the unit... Wait, if there is... How's that is it's very situational. So if you're in cover, 
within six inches of your warlord, and you get hit by something that's AP minus one, yeah. you get a plus one that offsets the minus one that you're getting hit. That's a, yeah, you've explained it well. I, 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 because the rest of them weren't very... Oof. Well, if you're going, if you're going uh, Stalker Bolt Rifles... If you're going you're Stalker Bolt Rifles and your Warlord's going to be by I'm them. not saying this is a great Warlord trade. It's probably the, it's the best one for my... It's the best one, in my yeah. opinion, for the gun line so far. It could combo well with the stratagem we'll talk about later. Y yes. Um, but then Hand of Dorn. This is the one I thought you'd be taking every this, time. Because this is what I you've taken in, two of the, in both of our games so far. I've taken this every time. Uh, Hand of Dorn. Uh, before the battle, if your army is battle forged, roll a d3. You gain a number of command points equal to the result. So what you've done is you've spent the command point to give somebody a second Warlord trait. Every roll time. a d3. And you get there's no reason, either there's no free reason. or you get two bonus or one bonus. There's no reason to not yeah. do it. Uh, so you pay command point for the second warlord trait, and then you gain D3. I mean, both times I used it, I rolled a three. Yeah. And then at two command points, there's warlord yeah. trait. Uh, do we want to look at the Crimson Fists? Yeah, okay, so Crimson Fists are in here. You can shotgun through those. Crimson yeah. Fists are in here. We have a few, uh, they have less of everything, but a few of everything. And uh, but Black Templars are not here. Don't know why. Right. So for the first Crimson Fist, Refuse to Die, uh, you get the Gilliman Return. On a 4+, plus, return this Warlord to play with D3 wounds. So it's not quite as good as Gilman. Uh, placing them as close as possible to their previous position more than one inch away from enemy models. Um, and it is at the end of the phase, so you can't, you know, do this and then get piled into and fought again. Um, when you ch uh, Tenacious Opponents, the second one. When you choose this Warlord to fight with, if there are at least five enemy models within six inches of them, you add D3 to this Warlord's attack. Could be good with the Teeth of Terra. You could yeah. be getting six bonus attacks. If you're stuck in the middle of something, so I could see that, like, for a command point on a captain with a jump pack and Teeth of Terra. Yeah. Tearing into an orc mob with, you know, 11 attacks. Um, Stoic Defender. Uh, friendly Crimson Fist units have the Defenders of Humanity ability, see Codex Space Marines, whilst they're within six inches of this Warlord. I don't know what that ability does. Um, that's the uh, objective security. Uh, okay, so they all get obsec, and each model in that unit counts as two. For no, we should say that way for those who are new to eighth edition. Uh, that means sure. they uh, control the objective over anybody. Else yeah. Other than so the you have your normal objective controllers, and then you have troops actually, who control it more. I can read it here with the priority. actual definition, or actually how they word that rule. But it is cool that they count as two models. So you could have a five-man squad count as. 10 models. Like they're, 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 they are Plus stubborn. Plus your warlord would count as two because he's going to be affected by so that as well. Defender of Humanity is troop choices. Um, uh, so typically you, you control an objective if you have more models than your opponent. Um, Defender of Humanity means that your troop choices to supersede that. Unless they have the same rule, then you go by more models. So this is giving the, that ability to all models, not just troop choices. Friendly Crimson Fist units have the Defenders of Humanity ability while they're within six inches of the world. So that does hit himself, too. So Which well, she would have, yeah. Technically, you make your Warlord obsec. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. And counting as two models. Go ahead and bolt that something. Yeah. Okay, so Warlord traits, not bad, not great. Typical Warlord trait stuff. Yeah. I like the Command Point one. I think that one stands out. Um, relics. Okay, the Spartan is still here. It's a crappy pistol. No, it's an 18 inch range pistol. Uh, strength 4, minus 3, 2 damage. You can target a character. 18 inch range character sniper. Uh, they have their special banner that's plus 1 to hit within the fight phase. Uh, they have the Eye of Hypnoth. I think it was a Vigilus relic, basically. Yes, it was in the Vigilus detachment. You, a yep. character gains the ability to have a 6 inch aura of reroll once to wound. So I gave it to my captain and yep. I had a reroll once to hit and wound with the captain. And that's nice. If yeah. you're saving points, uh, you don't want to bring that lieutenant, lieutenant um, then you stick the uh, I have hit mouth on it and you get I both think for the price of one. I'm going to use that most of the time. Um, Bones of Ostrak. Uh, I think that's the same as it was before. It just, if you, their, their special uh, second discipline is geo, Geokinesis. Yeah, yeah geo Geokinesis. Uh, so if you, the librarian rolls on Geo, or for, use Geokinesis, you get to reroll the result. Yep, you get one reroll. Um, and then the Crimson Fists get two. Uh, they get Duty's Burden, uh, which is a replacement for a auto bolt rifle, stalker bolt rifle only. Not terrible. Um, fire two, strength five, minus two, two damage. Yeah, increases the AP and the strength. Yeah. And then they get a uh, special power fist. Um, it's just a which is just a power fist that's not. Oh, oh no, it's, it's flat three. Yep. And it doesn't have a minus one to hit. Yeah, so it's basically a thunder hammer without minus one to hit. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, special issue war gears what is all the typical stuff you expect. Uh, they're gatebreaker bolts. I don't even remember. It was so mediocre. They even had a special ammunition. Yeah, don't they have? Is this special? Yeah, they have. Yeah, they have the fist of Terra. It's a it's a power fist with um, LT minus one to hit. 
mm, and, and an additional attack. Additional attack. So yeah. Yep. So that's not bad. Uh, and then the great bre- gate breaker bolts, which is quite a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Um, you select one bolt weapon that the model is equipped with, and when the bear shoots with that weapon, you can choose for it to fire a gate breaker bolt. If you do, you can only make one attack with that weapon. But if that attack hits, make D3 wound rolls instead of one. Each successful wound roll results in a wound that must be allocated. So you can do one shot that could do up to three wounds. I don't see the use for this. Yeah, and... I'm not going to waste the command point on this roll. When you resolve the attack, it has an AP of minus five, but damage one. Yeah. I mean... Ah. Maybe it's situational. I could see I, I it guarantee. on eliminator sergeants, <sighs> but it eliminators, would require eliminators want to target a character who's almost always going to have an involved. Right, and it does require a line of sight, so maybe not. So yeah, I don't see it. I, there's going to be a time where I'll play a game like oh, I wish I had this round right now. Yeah, but like, it's definitely not. Um, yeah. It's, it's not mortal wound we bullets. We have the Warden's Curious, add one to the wound characteristics, and... That's it. No, uh, the... Horic Aquila. Um, four A model with this relic has a four pin bone, and when they would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound in the psychic phase only, you ignore, ignore it on a five plus. I can see giving that to a librarian. Um, okay, so the relics here, we have, a, we have a couple of nice... Well, forget the Crimson Fist, but we have a nice power fist. We have the Eye of Hypnoth, which I think is really cool. Get that, yeah, uh, the Hypno- Eye of Hypnoth is a real value relic. So, again, nothing that stands out as amazing, but typical relics. I like the Eye of Hypnoth, though. So I'm going to use that the most, I think. If I yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to be throwing out those librarian powers, um, those bones are not bad. Yeah, Geokinesis isn't... Geokinesis isn't amazing, but it's you still get the amazing. regular Space Marine powers, and you still get the but this one, powers. But this one is only Geokinesis. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, this only helps you. Yeah. Never mind that. Uh, probably not taking so, it. So whatever. It's typical war gear stuff. Oh, stratagems. Okay. 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 I get. Okay. You get that one. Yep. Uh, the best stratagem ever seen <laughs> ever, and ever in a book. For one command point, you can spend. You can use the stratagem. It's a uh, bitter. Bitter enmity. I can't say that word. Because uh, it's a fight phase. Yes, it's only using the fight phase, and only when you're <laughs> fighting iron warriors. Yep. Uh, you can reroll hit into the wound. You have to reroll your hits and wounds against Iron Warriors in the first place. Like honestly, if this wasn't in the book, I would have, I would have, I would have burned down. You know what? I, I can't think of one stratagem that was better, yeah. and that was the one where if you had Dark Angels and Space Wolves. Oh yeah, that's right. You that took was... your characters off the table, and they had a little fight, and then they came back wounded and with some bonuses. <laughs> All joking aside, I love. I actually do love the like, characters in here. It's fluffy. <laughs> it's fun. We're not complaining, but no. Uh, I think maybe someday you'll see that get used. We're not going to go through every stratagem because why? Um, we will. We will go through. A lot of them are old. Okay, what, is bolster defense different? I don't know. Oh, pick a train feature and add one of the save throw. It's once per game. And they can't move. No, it's not once per game. Use it in the end of the move phase. Right. As long as you need to range stationary, uh, I wanted the saving throw. Okay, it's not terrible. It's only one command point. So if you take, if you got a unit of stalker bolters and you're never moving them again and they're stuck in train. No, it's only for that phase, I think. Yeah, it's only for that phase. Oh, no, it is only once per battle. No, yeah, you, you, you pop this strat for one command point and then they never move again, but they get plus two from cover instead of plus one. Cool. Mm. Uh, okay, yeah, whatever. Might, <laughs> I actually might use that sometimes. Some guys don't move. Uh, sappers, when we fight a building, I think it was? Yeah, Sappers helps you kill buildings better. Yeah, I'm um, not even a bother. I'm not even moving bother swiftly on. Uh, pain is a lesson. Ignore damage on a 6 plus for one command point. Yeah. Is this infantry? Infantry? Uh, vehicle. Uh, it no. can't be a vehicle or yeah. a servitor. It's so, no infantry. Uh, Close range bolter fire, two command points, your bolt weapons become pistols. Right. That's but very good. So now you have your best close um, combat in the game is a uh, stalker bolt rifle marines. Units win in a pure plus unit. Bolt weapons. Uh, does that work on bolt storm gauntlets? Yep, it's a bolt weapon. Now, it's only pistol two instead of, I think, their base three. But it still lets you shoot your True. bolt storm com- True. gauntlets in combat. So that's not bad. It's not bad at all. No, I like no. it. Uh, especially because your bolter discipline will kick in and you'll get bonus hits on sixes. Uh, yeah. So bolter drill is another one that gives you an extra hit on sixes. So every time you roll, it's two command points. I think yep. it's army wide. Uh, uh, yep. Uh, no, it's a unit. 
Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when you choose an Imperial Fist unit from your army to shoot with. It is. Until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made so by a model in know. that unit with a bolt weapon. So six is already giving you an extra cut with a bolt weapon. You can spend two command points to make it three for that, for one unit for one phase. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, if you I really mean, need to kill something, you need to burn a bunch If of you're rocking points. up with triple brigade, I could see it. If you're running one but brigade, you're, you're still no. It's still going to be a ten-man squad. Uh, maybe you but spend... But ten-man intercessor squad? In the tactical doctor, are you gonna use it? Are you gonna use uh, rapid fire bolt guns with the Imperial fists? Maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe, I can see it. Um, it's situational, but there's gonna be a list out there that works around that at some point. Oh, this was good. Two command points for stubborn defense. Yep. Use this strategy at the start of the battle. Um, oh, if you want to be on the battlefield, weird. Uh, until the end of the battle, you can't discard storm and defend objectives. So those are the defend ones, right? And storm. So you can't, like, the Storm is like, go ahead and capture an objective and yep. defend his hold. You can't discard those cards, but when you do score them, you get an extra point. Yep. I'll use it every time. I and that's that. going to combo with another one we'll get to in a minute here. Uh, tank Hunters is next. Two command points. Uh, we we'll use that every mm-hmm. game. At least once every game. Uh, le- no, I've used it at least twice every game so far, actually. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's two command points. You target an enemy vehicle, and then your army is plus one to wound that vehicle. Right, and it's the whole is it army. Is heavy weapons? No. Yep. Just add one to wound rolls. Yeah. So, you know, you're facing a guy with a knight, Castellan, or a fire raptor Literally. full of terminators, Literally or everything. I, I can't anything count. with the vehicle keyword. In both of our games, they'll give me spoilers, but both of our games we had repulsors, gatling weaponry, uh, tear up vehicles with toughness eight. Because yep. I'm wounding them on fours, and they're two damage each. Yep. My strength five, minus my heavy bolters are wounding toughness eight vehicles on fours, doing two damage per bolt shot. Yes, and exploding hits on sixes. And exploding, yeah, it just it, it's it's actually really good. This is really now the really two good. damage is only in the devastator doctrine. Yeah, which you're gonna be <clears throat> most but of the time, I think. I think you're gonna you're gonna see what we found in this book that imperial fists are an army that want to pop vehicles in the devastator doctrine and, and then, then switch. switch to the tactical doctrine that's to clean up everything that basically came out that's of them. that's the what we're thinking at the end here. Um, is there any more we're talking about? Yeah, um, more there talking is about. one. Uh, that was what we're talking about, Praetorian's Wrath. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the Shield Unwavering. This is the one that combos with Stubborn Defense and that Warlord trait we were looking at earlier. What was that one? Um, use this stratagem at the end of your turn. Select one Imperial Fist Infantry unit from your army that is within three inches yeah. of an objective marker. Until the start of your next turn, add one to the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. And when resolving an attack made against that unit, add one to the saving throws. Saving throws. And it works with Invulnerables. So you can have a two of Invuln Terminator. Terminator unit. Yeah. Or a captain. Or a captain. Or a captain. Which works well with your captain who won't fall if you back. Want, if you want if you want to you know, bring all those things together and send off your own little version of the Smash. But captain. that's that's really good. You get a you, you get a squad and cover, they're holding an objective, and you're like, I'm gonna cake this because I'm gonna take this defend objective and you're gonna come clear me off it. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting plus one to your saving throws and you're getting plus one to attack. So if they charge in to clear you out, you're hitting with even more swings. Uh, and the plus one to your saving throws works in the fight phase too. It's situational, but you can really use it. Uh, we should talk about Praetorian's Wrath. is two command points. Use a strategy by the start of your movement phase if the Devastator Doctrine is active. Uh, until the start of your next movement phase, when resolving an attack made by, with a heavy or grenade weapon by an Imperial Fist model from your army, an unmodified wound roll of six increases the armor penetration by one. So, first battle round, our first turn, maybe you go first. Um, any six of the wound with your heavy weapons are going to be extra AP. Uh, now, that's... Situationally good. Well, it's not going to be okay. Last cannons are going to ignore most your armor anyway. Yep. But it's going to be really good with auto cannons and heavy yep. bolters with with the tank hunter stratagem. Yep. Or even without the tank hunter stratagem, you, taking those auto cannons and heavy bolters and making them ignore or reduce armor saves. Because you got to remember, with Imperial Fist, every wound that gets through to a vehicle in the Devastator Doctrine count. You know, you're adding to it. So I mean, it's, it's just it's how many saving want. throws do you need your enemy to fail? Um, and you know, uh, in one of our games, you kill the tank commander. Uh, with three shots going through. Yeah. Um, I don't the remember. It was a Predator auto cannon, yep. maybe? It was a Because um, I only needed to fail four saves, and that's a dead yep. dead tank. Four damage each from the Predator auto cannon. Yep. Um, and I only got 12 wounds, yeah. and you're minus two from Devastator, and if you'd pop that, um, you'd be minus three. minus three on sixes to wound, and that puts me at a six-up save. And if you've only got to fail three of them, there's a big difference between a five up and a six up. I do want to mention clearance protocols real quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they get grenadiers, guys. Uh, just like uh, Imperial Guard do, you can spend a command point to throw up to 10 grenades. Uh, 
could be good in the Devastator Again, Doctrine. Grenades get AP in the Devastator yeah, Doctrine. It's not. Uh, if I can ever get to use it, I'll do it. That sounds great. <laughs> 10 D6 grenades because you tried to charge me out of Deep Strike. All right, we're going to shotgun through Geokinesis because it's kind of boring. Uh, yeah. Six new psychic, sorry, six new powers for the Geokinesis Discipline. Uh, Tectonic Purge manifests on a six. Um, when a charge roll for an enemy would be within 12 of the psychic or subtract to your roll. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not and it bad. does combo with your repulsor field. Yep. Oh yeah. So it's if you're gonna run, if you're gonna run like uh, repulsor executioner or repulsor or even the Sturius, the big tank, you put a librarian by so, it, yeah, and you okay, make it minus so four to charge. That might be my favorite one. Uh, Rock and ruin, uh, manifest in six kills buildings. It, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm moving. On. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> Iron Inferno casting value of six, eighteen inch range. Um, Visible to the Psyker, roll D6 for enemy unit within six of that point. So you pick a point within 18, and every unit within it's six. It's like of a that weaker point, bombardment. Four plus take one more. Eh. One more to wound. I'm not going to bother. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Fortify is pretty good. Uh, you heal D3 wounds to uh, infantry or biker unit. Yep. I like that one. I guess Probably I like good with centurions more. or aggressors. Or anything, anything, oh, aggressors. Anything. Uh, combo with an apothecary, too. You yeah. get an apothecary at the end of the movement phase, you bring back an aggressor, well, and then you heal him back to full. It's the one I went with in my, in my not, the, not the game connection to this video, but the next game I played. Aspect of Stone, casting value 5, add 2 to the psychic like strength and toughness characteristic. Not bad, but not great. Toughness 7, librarian on a bike. And then, I guess, uh, <laughs> Chasm. It's a thing, you is, can do it. It's a thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess you can give all the other Warlord trade stuff. And yeah. yeah, okay, all right. All I right. mean, I'm not saying it's good, but you could do but something can, cool with but it. But you could do it. <laughs> and I think that's really where this book's at. You can do cool stuff. Uh, okay, so Chasm is a warp charge value 6. If manifest is like an enemy unit that cannot fly and with an 18. Uh, and visible. visible. Roll 2d6. The result is less than the lowest move characteristic in that unit. It suffers one mortal wound. If the result equals the lowest move characteristic in that unit, it suffers d3 wounds. If the result is greater than the lowest move characteristic, it suffers three mortal wounds. So you got those movement five centurions? Yeah, you're probably going to do three more wounds to them. That's going to pick up a body. Yeah. No, they're four. They're four now? Yeah, four. Oh, it'll work on aggressors. Yeah, actually, you'll get your one aggressor. Uh, tactical objectives, nobody cares about. Okay, it's got so a name chart. You we, can generate we, names. We've shot through the book. Now, my initial thoughts. We have, we have some time. We have some time to get some good discussion. 15-ish minutes. My initial thoughts were this thing lacks... Focus. I think we were really just expecting um, a bigger focus. When I say we, I want to talk. I don't want to like talk on behalf of somebody else. But Josh and I were really talking about this. Yeah, yeah. You guys were talking so, about it. I showed up and was like, "Wait a minute." Yeah. So I'm not going to speak for <laughs> Josh, but this is the conversation Josh and I were kind of having. Yeah. Like we really expected more of an emphasis on bolt weapons. Sure. And now that is, I'm not saying it's not there, um, but like I. But you, you, you're expecting something about bolt weapons. You open the book and you see a rule that says you damage buildings and vehicles. Which has and also you go, kind of been there. Who thing brings too? buildings? I don't know. I, I, haven't seen, I don't think I've ever seen anybody bring one once. Actually, my buddy Owen tried to. There was a weird combo way back at the beginning of age, but that's all gone now. Right. There's no need for them. But that kind of overshadowed the fact the, the that vehicle it, thing? Mo it chews through vehicles. Well, okay, so we also, did, we also made a mistake. Maybe, maybe not a mistake, but we were also directly comparing it to. Sure. Iron hands. And that's so we're, we're looking sense. at reroll ones, ignore the penalty for move to fire, ignore damage on six plus, two plus one damage. Iron hands seem to have it better. So it felt like, okay, this is just iron hands, but not as good. But then we had a nice long discussion, mm -hmm. and we tried to point out the points, the, the things where this is the first book we've seen. Well, I guess maybe Ultramarines, you can argue as well, but your, your goal is to not get into the one doctrine that you want to be in and, and stay for the rest of the game. Yeah. You want to you want to take out their vehicles. Yep. Turn one, turn two, and then move to your your tactical yep. doctrine, and then you have your aggressors and everything else going. So yeah. I think we I, th I think if this book had come out in the, in the original two pairing, people might have been whining, oh, it's so strong, extra damage against vehicles, yeah. like it's too good. I think the fact that it's coming out after Iron Hands is gonna uh, it's overshadowing these guys and making them look not as good. But after playing a couple of games with them, it's still with this book. It's right. still very good. And to be completely frank, that extra damage against vehicles it's has so been murderously good. good. So, There so was a good. time in one of the games we played where you put 30 wounds through yep. to oh. a repulsor in a single round of shooting mm -hmm. from a from, single model. Yeah. Um, because there were three damage a shot, and it's like, ah. Uh, but like, okay. With their you overkilled me by... Twice. Twice. With, with their tank hunter stratagems, heavy bolters, and devastator doctrine, they're just, it's, you're wounding vehicles on a four, minus two, two damage. I mean, you're, yeah. 
Like, they, they have the ability to tear down vehicles. They do not have the ability to tear down the Leviathan. The Iron Hands Leviathan. But nobody I does. mean, nobody does. And but they will... This Imperial Fist will destroy your buildings, switch over to tactical, and destroy vehicles. your... I'm oh, sorry, your vehicle, Yeah. And your buildings. They'll destroy your buildings, too, if you bring and one. you bring one. But they're going to destroy your vehicles, and then they're going to switch to tactical, and they're going to tear down your infantry. Yep. And, um... They're going to be surprisingly potent against a lot of armies um, that have lower wound count vehicles. So you look at something like Guard, where you got a lot of a lot of Chimera chassis, only oh, eleven yeah. wounds. Oh yeah. You only need to get three hits through. Like you only need to get six heavy bolter hits through to take down a Chimera. Even the Elder vehicles. Like Eldar vehicles are a lot of more toughness. On. Six, six wounds. Yep. Um, you just got to hit them, and then they will Boom. fall. Boom. Um, you know, for Harlequin vehicles. Yep. You take suppressors. Uh, Boom. you only need to get two. They fail See, two, four up and vulnerable saves, and that's a dead vehicle. So I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little sad because I think this book is actually quite strong. Mm-hmm. It's quite flavorful. After really getting to playing a couple games yep. and seeing it, I actually think it's really well done. This book is really well done. Yeah. We just that, uh, yeah, it's the other one that's going to be a problem. So we have to set that aside. I have to set that aside. And uh, I think I say this book is nothing but positive. I think it did yep. a pretty good job. Um, I mean, it could have some more cool stratagems, but... Well, does um, it need more? Like, it has a couple, it has a few. How many do we, like, remember, we have, a, we have this whole We book. have that, and there's a lot of good stratagems there. Yeah. And that's fair. I think that people would have... Like, people would have been psyched to see a little bit more fist in there. Like, uh, the ability to put storm shields on something as a callback to the heresy when you could just get yeah, storm shields cool. everywhere. Or, mm-hmm. like, uh, the ability to dig into cover. Or, like, they so, kind of got they that. They kind of got that, but then you can't move. So, like, you know, yeah, th- yeah. I could see somebody being like, man, it could have been better. But for what they got, it's really good. And I think it'll play like a fist army. There'll be, I mean, there's not going to be a lot of las cannons. There's not going to, I mean, las cannons are good, but you can get such consistent damage out of cheaper weapons. It's going to be a lot of mass weapons, a lot of bolt guns, a lot of auto cannons, yep. a lot of. I think I have, I, I realize at this moment, there's one, one thing that's disappointing me. Okay. As Luke, Luke, I don't know if you were around for any of it. Luke and I have been having this uh, kind of joke for the last few weeks about these supplements. Mm-hmm. Um, how, oh, this is really good, especially on aggressors. Oh, this sure. is really good. Especially on aggressors. Oh, this is really good. Especially on aggressors. I'm not seeing that for this book. We, we, we made that joke for, like, yeah. uh, we did it for Salamanders, Iron Hands, we did it for Raven Guard, we did like all, uh, Ultramarines. Like, everything was about aggressors. This one's not about aggressors, and then, the what, that's fine. The reason why this disappointed me is... I think this will work for aggressors, though. Oh, well, I mean, this works for aggressors. Well, but... Okay, what, what's in here for, for aggressors? You have to roll your shots separately, but you got exploding sixes on your bolt storm gauntlets. You do have to roll them separately, sure. But that, that, that's why I'm a little disappointed. Because uh, aggressors and seem to be the essence of Imperial Fists. It's bolt weapons and power fists. Okay, <laughs> so you take your six-man unit of aggressors, and you pop your bolter discipline stratagem, so it's three hits on sixes. Yep. And all of a sudden, those, what is it, six shots per guy, so it's like 36 or something bolt storm gauntlet shots. <laughs> You know what? They're, they do ignore cover, right? So mm-hmm. the, the turn, uh, go to tactical doctrine, minus one, and ignoring cover. So, okay, you got 36, you get 16%, you know, one in six dice. You get six exploding sixes out of that roll, roughly, if you roll average. I mean, you could roll low, you could roll hot. And if you pop your strat, those six turn into 18 hits. That's true, but that came out of this book. Oh no, that one stratagem came. The stratagem yeah. came. The stratagem so we have one for the aggressors. I know. I know. Nobody should be like, oh, what should make aggressors even better? Aggressors are amazing. They're too good. But yeah, that was my. I guess it's my one disappointment. You can't deep strike them. But hey, you put a big piece of. You know, this might be a book where you don't put a line of sight blocking ruin in your terrain. If you're doing player place terrain, you put a you put a big forest in the middle, and then you pop your strat, and they don't move. I will say this though. Um, uh, this this pains me, but no no um, primaris army looks better. Than a yellow Primaris army. I think it's probably the greatest color scheme they on Primaris. But either way, I think I think we got it done. Did any other closing thoughts on what you think of the Imperial Fist were? Are how you, um, you know, play them? Auto I think cannons. they're gonna play really well. I, I love auto cannons. Uh, I like that they're gonna suppressors, be suppressors, uh, predator auto cannons. I honestly even would take a look at stalkers. Um, yep. You know, six auto cannon shots on a T8 chassis with a three up save for oh, 95 points. I was thinking about just whirlwinds again. Whirlwinds. Yeah. Three damage whirlwinds against vehicles. Ignoring line of sight. 
Um, yeah. I love stalkers because they're going to hit things that fly on twos. And if it's supersonic, then you're back to threes. Are, are Thunderfire Cannons vehicles? No. No? I don't believe so. Trying to hit those things that people are hiding in the backfields with predators, ignoring cover. With whirlwinds? With, oh yeah, with whirlwinds, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, either way. Okay, so um, good book. Yeah. Uh, I like book. that it's going to play Devastator right away. And then you probably will, maybe will oh, switch to Oh, do we have a minute? Yeah. Sure. Um, what do you got? The Siegebreaker cohort is still good. Oh, yes. Let's talk about that. Um, especially with the seismic devastation. Um, pick, use a stratagem at the start of the shooting or fight phase. Pick a Siegebreaker cohort unit, which can be a Centurion, a Dreadnought, or a Vindicator. So let's be honest, it's Centurion Devastators with heavy bolters and hurricane bolters. Um, and a wound roll of 6+, plus for the... Uh, for an attack made by that unit targeting a vehicle or building, uh, inflicts a mortal wound in addition to its normal damage. Yeah. Um, you take a big unit of Centurion Devastators and you pop your strat, so a six to hit is three hits, and then sixes to wound are mortal wounds and two damage, and you will chew up a knight in one go of shooting almost certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that's still really that's good. Still really, it's still very, very good. The relic from it is repeated in the codex. So you can't take two instances of the relic, but that is still a genuinely good stratagem combo. I, I love the yellow centurions, or the assault ones as well. Yeah, either version, I mean, it, it just works on centurions, so it does work on assault centurions too. So you can shove hurricane bolt or assault centurions in somebody's face and, hey, I'm gonna shoot you to death with three hit bolter shots or you can come fight me and I'm going to punch you with my siege drills. I don't know. The, the aggressors replace assault and trains, but devastators and trains, especially with that, are still quite, quite nice. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we threw that in there um, because that is still a very strong combo and they didn't do anything to change that. Yeah, Imperial Fist was definitely an army I was hard, uh, considering on doing my next army, but we had, we had so many uh, Imperial bat, uh, Imperium bat reps that maybe you got to do a Xenos thing instead of another thing. Space Marines. Unfortunately, but ah, the yellow at. is so cool. I had a lot of fun. Paint them yellow time. and, you know, play them when you can. Time to, time to go Xenos again. That's it. Uh, I guess the, that's it for Space Marines for a while. Yeah. We have all the books. Unless um, Black Templars or something like that comes hey, out. Hey, Black Templars would be sweet. I don't know what they'd do. Um, probably not be good. But I, I think the future for us is going to be, we've got a bunch of... Um, Psychic like Awakening books for the future, so we'll do those yeah. next coming up. We'll see how that's going to affect all of these things because uh, those are going to affect everybody too, right? So, I don't know. The future for Space Marines is looking very good. Not as bright as Iron Hands, but we all know that. Um, that's it. Uh, way in below, uh, point out things that you thought we um, communicated incorrectly, stratagems that we, you know, probably had a poor opinion of that you thought might be better. Or a better auto cannon platform because we're looking for those. Well, I think I think you still, we can talk about that really. The, the, um, Mortis double auto can Mortis double auto can and are be suppressors, stalkers. There's got to be something out there. Come on, guys. Yeah, point out everything with auto can and chassis for us. <laughs> Comment below. Tell me your crazy iron, sorry, Imperial Fist stratagem, uh, stratagem yeah. strategy, and tell me the thing, the combo, the strategy, the strategy you're going to use in, in Imperial Fist that's actually going to be better than Iron Hands. I think it's doable. I do. It's auto. I think it's auto can. Um, and heavy bolters. Yeah. I mean, Iron, I iron Hands can reduce the damage on a Dreadnought, and the Iron Stone can take one damage off, but that's, huge. that's your bonus damage. I mean, you're shooting a D6 damage last cannon, and the Iron Stone takes one off. Well, you're still D6. We'll, we'll, we'll say this. Um, it's not out right now. I don't know when it'll be out in a couple of weeks, maybe. We did another game where yep. uh, we played a mirror match of 2,000-ish points. It's actually more than 2,000 points each. 2,061. Um, 2,061. Iron Hands, Imperial Fists, exactly the same list. Yep. We took Warlord Trace and Relics from our supplements and uh, the Discipline from our yep. from our supplements. We had a mirror match, and the minus one damage stone is pretty good, but the plus one damage was better. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So there's that. But stay tuned for that. It'll come out soon. Uh, again, way in below. Uh, join us in the vault right now to watch the Bat Rep where we play against Ash Uh If you're not already a vault member, I'll say it again. You can click the link below. Get a seven day free trial. It won't cost you a thing. Do it. It's watch great. That. And watch everything else in the vault because there's tons of stuff in there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Well, thank Jake for coming in and doing this with me. Of course. Happy work, Amy.